Hi, this is Brandy. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have, first of all, a um, box of goodies that I had ordered that my girls said, um, I have three daughters, and they all said, Mom, you can't open it now. You have to do it on camera. So this is my unboxing video for haul from Ranger uh, products. Um, so let's see what I got. Kind of remember. I always love getting packages. Who doesn't, right? All right, so there's that. We can save this because you know why not? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So let's see. Let's take everything out, and then we'll show you all the stuff. Um, my cat Stitch looks like he's about to come help investigate everything. He, he saw a box and he loves boxes. So I was at my mom's visiting her and she said, well, not she said, and I said to her, Tim Holtz is doing a demo. I really shouldn't watch it because then I want whatever he uses. Well, of course I washed it. And of course I bought what he used. Um, Go figure. So I bought some of these um, new Distress Embossing Glazes. I got Vintage Photo, uh, Tattered Rose, uh, Cracked Pistachio, and oh my gosh, I can't wait to use this one. It's my favorite color. I love, 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 love this shade of blue. Um, and Broken China. Okay, so I got those, and we may use those today. I mean, I hate to do another video on embossing those, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. Three embossing videos in a row. Um, that's kind of crazy. The other thing is, um, I just recently started uh, following Tracy Fox, and she does junk journals, and um, I think she did this. Either she did this or Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. I should have looked it up before my video. Um, I'll link it below if I can figure out who did it. Uh, but these are metal patinas. And um, like I mentioned before, I do metal smithing, um, which I usually use like liver sulfur to color my metal. But I have some cheaper blanks that are aluminum because I also do metal stamping. And I had one on my desk, but now I can't find it. Here it is. This is one of the really, really, really cheap ones I bought when I first started doing um, the metal smithing, uh, I mean metal stamping, and uh, it's super hard metal and doesn't stamp well, so I've never used it. Uh, anyways, I bought these because you can take things like these silver binder rings, and um, you can take it. I'm looking over there because my cat is trying to climb on the desk and color them and give them a patina. See, I use these on my mini albums. Um, so I wanted to try it just to see what happens if I use this, um, them, just kind of test it out to see, because maybe I want to do one that's a little more vintage. And these silver, I really don't like these silver rings that much. I tend to use some black ones sometimes, but I bought the copper, uh, and the bronze and then this is to help seal it so uh, and you can also use it as an extender so if you don't want it as dark and then I got this one uh, oh gosh how do you say that vertigre vertigo anyway it looks like um, aged copper when you put it on there that kind of uh, teal color so I got that one too and then I got these two lovely stencils I uh, love Tim Holtz stuff. Everything he does is fabulous. I mean, who doesn't? We all do. I got the lace and then the, which one is this? Flourish. These are awesome. I can't wait to use these. I have a couple of journals that I'm making that have a plain white background. And so I thought I could put some stencil on there to kind of liven them up a little bit. 
So I think what we're going to try out today is instead of doing the embossing glaze, which I mean, I really, 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 really want to do them. I even have my first mark pen and I got some paper dolls because I wanted to do the same thing Tin Holtz did, but I don't want to do another video of heat embossing. So we are going to instead try to do these binder rings. Um, we may do both. I think we may just do both because this one we're going to have to wait on. I'll show y'all what it looks like in another video. So what I think you do is, um, whoever I watched, and like I said, I should have looked it up before, they put the paper clips and such in a bag, um, which I don't have any plastic gloves, so I'll probably color my hands later, but it won't be the first time. And then you just... I should, I'm kind of rambly this morning. I have not had but like a fourth of a cup of coffee. So I, I wanted to get this done early before my dogs decide to bark at nothing outside, which they tend to do. So this one is antique copper and this one is aged bronze. I'm going to use both of those and then I think once I may put a little bit of the other color in here. I'm not sure. As you can tell, I'm just I'm just not sure. So we're going to find out what this does. So we're just gonna drip a couple of, well, I say we are. They don't wanna come out. I always have needles over here for bottles that don't want to work correctly. They're for sewing too, but they come in handy for this. Okay, let's see if it was clogged. All right, so for whatever reason, this one does not want to squirt out of the bottle, right? So we're just going to do this and I'll investigate that later. Okay. All right, now I probably have way more than that color than I wanted. All right, next we're going to put just a small amount of this bronze in there. Let's hope it squirts out. Shake vigorously until mix and ball rattles and pigment mix apply in a small, okay. You can also apply this with a brush. I've never, I'll have to experiment because of course I've never used these before. Oh, okay, that one came out really quickly. So I don't know what's wrong with that other one, but that one squirted out. I'm going to use a little bit of this lace. I don't know if you shake this. Um, glaze, gently squeeze. Okay, it doesn't say to shake this one. All right, so this one we're just gonna squirt a little bit of a couple of drops of that in there. I'm just gonna zip it up and then we're going, I could have put more of them in there. We're gonna mix it around onto them. This is a good way to do it and not get your fingers all nasty. Of course, if you painted it on with a brush, I guess you wouldn't get your fingers nasty that way. But this is a way to just get kind of a sheen of the color and not like super um, dark. Let's see. Well, if you have a sensitivity to fragrances, I will tell you it does have a scent to it. Um, I tend to be a little sensitive to things that have a strong odor. I even wear a mask when I use fabric tack, so, uh, cause I just can't handle the smell. It's not that overwhelming though. If you've ever used fabric tack, you know it, that one's pretty overwhelming. Uh, I hope this one starts squirting out right. I may have to contact, oop, oh wow. Okay, that time it worked. Wow, okay, that was way, way more than what I wanted. 
So we're gonna mix that around in there. And just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and use the other color too, why not? All right, so we'll mix it up. This is beautiful color. Okay, we're just gonna put like a drop of that one in there because I don't want a ton of that one. Ooh, okay, it, it is pretty strong. All right, we're gonna mix these up. Just do it in a well-ventilated area. My craft room, craft room, craft desk is in the is on the corner of my living room, so it's a really, it's a pretty big room, so I have a good bit of ventilation in here. If you're in an enclosed place, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it. Okay. So this is what they look like so far, which I mean, that really has taken the silver away. So that's a really nice different look. I may put a little more of the bronze in there because of course when I put that copper back in there, it really squirted in. I mean, I got a huge amount of the copper. But I'm gonna mix that around in there more and then I'll lay them out to dry and I'll show y'all the finished product. Uh, in another video. I'll show y'all what that looks like. Um, these are some of the things I made yesterday. I hope y'all can see that. Um, like I did with the one I made on camera. I made that one. And then I also made this one. And they're just going to be little tags to put on um, just anything. And you could actually even use this for like at Christmas time. You could do a piece of pretty Christmas paper and then put to and from on the back and hang it on a package. If you like to do pretty tags, that might be something I do later. All right, now, I think I really, really want to do that. Uh, I know it's another heat embossing video, but I've been really looking forward to this. Let me see how much time, yeah, we have a few more minutes. All right, let me find my paper dolls. I just ordered them. And I put them on my craft cart. Here they are. Okay, yeah, I have a craft cart that has all of my coloring, my Copic markers, my Prisma color pencils, and all on one cart. And it also has jewelry making stuff on the bottom. And then I have a cart with just like accessories, like for junk journals and stuff. I'm, I've pretty much taken over this corner of the living room. Um, my, I'm glad I have a very supportive husband. All right, so I'm going to do what Tim Holtz did in his video because I just thought it was fabulous and I had to try it. All right, we're going to use that little girl because I think she's super cute. I love these paper dolls. They are just so cute. All right, let's see. So what he did was, and if you watched his demo on uh, Facebook, he did a Facebook demo. He's been doing a lot of those. You've already seen this and I apologize you're seeing it again. And he does a whole lot more. So if you haven't seen it, go on there and check it out. Um, I think this is just on his Facebook page. Let's see. We're going to use the Tattered Rose because it's going to look really pretty. And what I love about these embossing glazes is they're not like a regular embossing powder, powder where they're really opaque. You can see through them. They're transparent. And so all these shade, all the shading and such that you see on this picture is going to show up after we emboss it, which I think is super cool. Now, I tried, now I've had this Versa marker for like 20 years maybe not that long but a very long time so the tip is like wrong but i soaked it in some uh, glycerin yesterday to kind of get it um juicy again so i'm just going to paint the pieces on that i want and i don't know if y'all can see it is wet where i painted it Oh, okay, and I do have the like that tip is that's just gone. Uh, I do have a bullet tip and it's still intact. Just this was probably stored out in my garage or something for a while and it just didn't survive the heat. I 
I'm gonna go back over this and just blend it, do it out a little bit. Okay. I put that in here. There's cat hair. Right. I'll put her in here and sprinkle some on. Ooh, I buried her. All right, so let's dust her off. And you can use an anti-static tool. I have one over here. Um, I forget about it. It's not something I've ever been in the habit of doing, so I, I just really forget it's there. I've given up on anything being perfect a long time ago, and I just go with it. All right. There's going to be some missing spots, but if I want, I might fill it back in, and I might not. All right. Heat up the heat gun a little bit. So, I appreciate everyone who subscribed to my videos, and if you know anyone who uh, loves paper crafting or just watching crafty videos, share my channel with them. I'm having a good time. I've thought about doing this for a long time and just decided to jump in and try it out. All right, here we go. Let's melt this. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, look how pretty that is. That's gorgeous. I just love how you can still see all the shading and everything through it. There are some missing spots, so let's go back now. Let's let it cool off a little bit, and we'll go back and do those spots. So here we go. I'm just going to put a little in that spot there, a couple of spots on our hat. I've been thinking about um, since the Daily Marker 30 Day is coming up, I have tons of colored images that I've done over the marker challenges and everything. So I was thinking about doing a series of cards where I, uh, videos I mean, where I make cards that we use in those images because I'm really bad about coloring images and then never putting them on a card. I don't know if any of you can relate, but I do it a lot. All right, let's heat this up and see what it finished looks like. All right, I'm in love with that. That is fabulous. Really, really is. I can't wait to use that on something. All right, well, Thank y'all very much for joining me today and seeing my new goodies and just playing with them a little bit. I'll show you on the next video I do what those binder rings end up looking like. And we'll start making some cards um, using some colored images and show you some of the things I'm coloring during the marker, uh, daily marker 30 day coloring challenge. And I hope y'all have a great day. Bye.